Good morning, Bishop Gorman. I'm Holly Losey. And I'm Maya Ellis. It's Thursday, March 3rd, and today is Alexander Graham Bell's birthday. In 1876, he created the telephone. This invention established a huge impact on our daily lives. Without him, there would probably not be Snapchat, Instagram, or even a smartphone. Having this technology is nice, but we have to remember that in the end, only God can make us truly happy. With that being said, let's stand for the prayer and pledge and remember that we are in God's holy presence. In the, in the name, name of the, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, be the master and ruler of my life. Guide me so that I may live a faithful life. In hard times, I become scared and feel alone. Help me not to lose sight of you. Help me see that you are with me for eternity. May your love rule in my heart so that I may only think, act, and speak with charity and goodwill for all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are you ready for the best Thursday ever, Bishop Gorman? Because BGTV is coming at you in five, four, three, two, one. Rocking the vibes on extreme blue and orange, climbing up the OG Tower. Night at a table is not going to work, or giving a dead cat a shower. Lord, every class with prayer, our will go mess his hair, and rock it now with teachers who dance. Always it go one way, BGTV Friday, and try to look good in those pants. This could possibly be the best day ever. And the forecast says that tomorrow will likely be a million and six times better. So make every minute count, jump up, jump in, and seize the day. And let's make sure that March 3rd, 2016, and 61 years ago, Elvis Presley made his first television appearance on Louisiana Hayride. With his new dance moves and style of music, Elvis soon became a music icon to the young people of America. Fox News. Elvis wasn't the only one who left an impact in the American people. With the presidential elections being this November, the Nevada caucus recently occurred these past two weeks. Eric Yerger went around to see how our seniors feel about being a part of this year's elections. Fox News can now project that businessman Donald Trump will win Nevada's Republican presidential caucuses. Here, Hillary Clinton just moments ago thanking her supporters here as what was supposed to be a simple caucus event turned into a victory party. Nevada is one of the most important states in the presidential election. And over the course of the last month, all the Republican and Democratic candidates flooded Las Vegas to try to win over voters in these early polls. This year, the elections are especially exciting for many Bishop Gorman seniors who attended the caucuses and had their expectations about the process challenged. Uh, I really didn't know what to expect at the caucus. It was a lot different than I expected because I got to Palo, which is where my precinct and caucus location was, and there was a massive line outside Palo, probably a couple hundred people, and then we went to our precincts and we voted. Then we stood outside after for a while, and Donald Trump ended up showing up there later, so that was very interesting. I did go to the Democratic caucus at Palo, and it was really crazy and super busy. It was really interesting. Um, there was a girl who started crying because that wasn't how Bernie would have wanted it to go. And there was another guy who started yelling at all of us and then he left very angrily. <laughs> Our seniors were not only first time voters, but also smart voters and made sure they were truly aware of who they were voting for. I think I definitely have kept up with the elections more this year, especially since it is my first time voting just because I do want to be more informed with um, the people I'm voting for and about the people I'm voting for. All of the students we interviewed also had one special message for their classmates. I think it's crucial to vote because we're the next generation, we're the youngest ones and we're the ones who this vote is gonna affect the most. And I think we have to unite together as a generation and choose somebody who's good for us. I'm Eric Yerger reporting for BG TV. Now let's send the show to Zach Zeller for this week's Global Gale. Zach? Thanks, Bryn. In international news on Monday in Moscow, police arrested a woman who's suspected of murdering a child after she was seen carrying a severed head near a metro station. According to police reports, the woman, who is the nanny of the four-year-old child, 
also set fire to the parents' apartment. When an officer asked for the woman's identification, she pulled the head of the child out of her bag and began screaming, quote, Alu Akbar, I am a terrorist, I am your death. And then she proceeded to threaten to blow herself up. However, no explosives were found. This is considered the most recent of many attacks in the region where there have been extensive amounts of violent Islamic attacks. Here in the United States, the KKK recently held a rally in Anaheim, California. Protesters were also at the scene, which led to a fight where three people were stabbed and 13 others were arrested as police quickly arrived on the scene. Locally, during the Nevada Republican Caucus, supposed KKK members showed up at Cimarron High School showing support for Donald Trump. Initially, this caused extreme shock and fear, but it was later discovered that the two citizens were actually African American and the stunt was a hoax. Many have called this an attack on Trump, while others believe it was an action against the entire Republican Party. A shooting occurred on Monday in an Ohio high school cafeteria where a 14-year-old student injured four students, two who were shot and two hit by shrapnel. The injuries do not seem to be life-threatening and the shooter is in custody. Finally, another shooting occurred at a factory in Kansas last Thursday when an armed gunman killed three people and injured 14 more before he was killed by a police officer. The mass shooting ended inside an XL Industries factory where as many as 300 people were working. So the police officers who stopped him saved multiple lives that day. We send prayers for those who were lost. I'm Zach Zeller, back to you guys. Thanks, Zach. Let's see what's, the, let's see what's happening at your school in this week's Gorman Scoop. Congratulations to Sefiana Sorrentino, Lexi Kuljak, and Ashton Fink for earning this week's Freshman Pride Award as nominated by Miss Wilson, Miss Riley, and Miss, Miss Miller and Mr. Riley. Keep up the good work. Did you still need your Pi Day t-shirts? There are a limited number of Pi Day shirts and sizes available that can be purchased for $15 in Miss Delgado's room, 506, until after school, until sizes run out. Come early because it's first come, first serve. Seniors, you can now reserve your spot on the senior trip to Disneyland, happening on May 13th. Tickets are now on... On sale, on sale in the activities office for $130, but payments can be split into two equal parts as long as the first one is made by March 31st. Cash and checks are accepted and printed permission slips are due at the time of purchase and can be found on the Bishop Gorman website and your class Shobi account. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Young in the activities office. Do you have a nice dress or shoes just sitting in your closet? If so, bring them to school and drop them off to campus ministry for the twice as nice drive. See Ms. Ports for more details. Next Friday, we'll be celebrating our Lenten Assembly. Please remember to wear your mass uniforms. And lastly, don't forget, tomorrow's 1130 dismissal and Junior Day Reflection, which will be held in the Ryan Hall starting at 730 a.m. Juniors may wear jeans and a spirit shirt. Let's toss the ball to Maya Ellis, who is the latest on our Gorman Sports. Maya? Thanks, Bryn. Congratulations to the men's basketball team who continued their fifth straight NCAA Division I state championship streak. Great season, guys. Spring not only brings nice weather and spring break, but it also comes with spring sports. So we had Dylan Bruton ask the spring coaches how they are preparing to start their seasons. What we're doing is just trying to get them in some sort of conditioning so that when we start full season, they're not injured or hurt or, you know, they don't have too many aches and pains. So right now we're pretty much just, we have them doing uh, some easy intervals and some distance runs. Um, well, like Dennis said, right now it's just preseason. So what we're doing is a lot of strength building, a lot of base work, working on their pace. Um, some kids came in who are freshmen or who have no real background in running. Um, so we're trying to add the education piece, talking a lot about nutrition, about how important sleep is, and about how um, much the mind affects what your body is capable of doing. Um, and really just trying to build uh, camaraderie as a team. And so everyone can uh, recognize the importance of um, friendship and relationship in the team to uh, reach their potential. It's been without a doubt our best turnout as far as uh, kids coming out and, uh, and getting after it in the preseason. Uh, winning our division, um, making it into regionals, going far in regionals, and even winning regionals to where we can go battle for state. Now on to lacrosse. Last Tuesday, the women played Centennial winning 16 to four. Let's roll the highlights. Skylar Minden scores with the far post shot. Skylar Minden then passes to Morgan Cook, who does a bounce shot into the goal. Paige Hilligas whips it on a free position shot. Carlin McLean catches it on a transition for another goal, and the Lady Gales go up 9-1 at halftime. 
Erica Yeager runs past the defense for a top corner shot. Alex Jones runs down, quickly snatches to her left, hands for a bounce shot into the goal, and Carlin McLean cuts down, catches the ball, and scores on another top corner shot. The men also played on Tuesday against Green Valley, losing 16 to seven. That's it. That's all we have for today, Bishop Gorman. Back to you guys. Well, Bishop Gorman, that's all for this week's show. I'm Brendan Beltram. And I'm Bryn Walsh. And, and this, this is BGTV. BGTV. This could possibly be.